Hello, it's Duncan again. I've um, been looking at Gilded Rose some more and um, I hadn't really wanted to read uh, other people's solutions until I'd worked through one myself. But looking at other people's solutions, some people seem to take the not changing the item class or items properties a lot more seriously than I did. So I wondered what it would be like to look at uh, where we would get if we, if we took that more seriously. Uh, there seem to be two ways to people interpret that. One is that you just can't change the test at all effectively, that you can't create new subtypes of uh, item, which is the first trick we used really in here. Um, and in fact, so that you can't subclass item at all. So I thought it'd be interesting to run through this and see what would happen if we took that very seriously um, and only really worked in Gilded Rose itself. The other thing that sort of come up, especially reading around Ron Jeffrey's um, solution to this, is around whether or not we have enough tests and whether we should be writing little unit tests. Um, I'm looking at the text uh, fixture and looking for that we run over 10 days, reasonably convinced that this is um, enough test coverage at least to do the refactoring. Um, should we want to add more tests as we go? I don't know. Um, I'm in two minds about it. I don't think the tests would have improved our final design because we we were aiming towards that final design through refactoring, not through the tests guiding us. Um, so I'm inclined to leave us with 10 days worth of tests, um, keep on running the same tests and uh, get on this time though just working in Gilded Rose and see where we get. So for clarity then, we're working in uh, the test is as it was after, I think, stage two of our previous refactor. So the point where we actually have a test we can run and it tells us whether things break or not. We can just check that by making a change and running. I don't know what that ran. Making a test and running. It does fail, undo, and it passes. OK, let's go into Gilded Rose and have a look. Uh, now, last time the first thing we did was convert this into a um, an enhanced 4, like that. This time I think we're going to go straight into Kotlin and see where that takes us. And just to check, we're going to say no, let's not change any code and find out if we needed to make any other changes. Try running that. It does actually fail, and for the same sort of reason as last time, um, we have now an items property should call get items on it. And again, we got round in the end to just deleting this test last time, so I think we'll do it this time. Save ourselves a bother. Okay, there we go. Uh, no good reason for this to be internal, I think. And we'll just reformat that in a way that looks slightly nicer to my eyes. Now, we might try the same trick, replace this with an enhanced for loop. Um, interestingly, um, in Kotlin, that doesn't work the same way. That's only looped over the indexes. And so the Kotlin refactoring support in IntelliJ certainly isn't as good, I think, as it is for Java. In Java, it could see that <coughs> we were only accessing each item, um, that it could pull that out as the single element for loop in, and in Kotlin just that just hasn't worked. We can give it a hint though so we can say uh, there is this variable in IntelliJ and it's 34 times uh, and if we do that maybe uh, no still really no help so we're just going to write it ourselves we're going to say for item in items then we can take that out and now we're at the place we were in Java. And the next change we're going to make is to take this entire thing and make it into a method. We're allowed to do that. And we're going to call this update. Splendid. Run those tests. Ooh. Already running. OK. Um, I'm not going to check in as much this time. I think um, we'll just go ahead and go 
with throttle up. Now last time we started breaking out into subclasses quite early. This time I'm interested to see how far we can go just um, playing in this procedural code here and see what falls out. I'm going to start really just removing duplication. So we're going to say this thing here. Um, well, actually, no. We're going to start with um, we're going to start with the negation because the negation is confusing, and we can still uh, invert the if condition in these places. So uh, that's item name equals, and this is item. We we'll convert, invert that, and we'll invert that, and we'll invert that. And we'll invert that. And one last one here. Okay, so having done that, um, this leads to some strange logic where we return out of the middle of this and so on. Uh, but let's let's leave that alone. See how far we can get. Now, the nice thing about that inversion is that now this means that we can ask this question and we can say um, this should become a method and it should become item is brie. Maybe just is brie item. That's asked twice, so yes, we'll do that. What next? Uh, this backstage passes. Is pass. Two of those. We'll have them both, thank you. Um, and we know that the other special type is sulfurous. Is sulfurous. Run that. So that's nice, and we now have three functions that I'm going to pull out into sort of static scope. In fact, we can pull all of these functions out into static scope. Just to check that we're not relying on any other state in Gilded Rose. Okay, that's nice. Now we're still going to want somewhere to put some behavior. And um, I think we're going to start with an enum class. So we're going to go down here and we say, let's have some sort of enum. Uh, and this is going to be item type. And we know that our types are sulfurous and passes and brie and other and we're going to want to exchange an item for its type uh, so let's give ourselves a, um, a function which we're going to call uh, type of and it's going to take an item and it's going to return an item type And what is that going to do? Um, I think, well, we'll basically just take this code here. Uh, so let's start there, wander along to here. Uh, it's not quite right in the mind. We'll go to the end and see what we get. OK, so uh, we want to say uh, when we're going to put in a when, so it's going to be return when. And let's just make this simple for now. Uh, item name equals sulfurous. So we're going to return sulfurous, which it doesn't seem to know about, but will in a moment. And we want to return different types. This is going to be a pass. And this is a place that we could We could put in different strategies for how we want to match the name, whether it just contains sulfurous or whether it has to be this complete name. And the else other. Right. Um, so now we have um, code that should 
just continue to work because we're not really calling it. Now we've copied this code into here. We should be able to say it's sulfurous if uh, the type of this equals sulfurous. And it looks like we're going to have to continue to say item type dot sulfurous. Let's solve that problem down here by doing that static import. And this is type of. And not this because we don't, this isn't a extension method. Okay, so where is this going? Well, it's going here basically. It's Brie, it's a pass if it's pass. It's Brie if it's Brie. Okay, let's run that. So that passes quite nicely. Tidy this up a bit. We do that. We can do that. Yeah. That will do this. Right. So now the key thing is that we're asking this all over the place, but we can inline these. I'm going to inline all of is Brie. I'm going to inline all of is pass. And this should be in is Sophia somewhere. I'm going to inline all of those as well. So we've made this more complicated. But it still passes. And now we can say this thing we can pull out early. So this is item, uh, yes, item, not item type. We want to pull out a variable for this thing, type of item, because it doesn't change over time. All eight of them, and this is going to be item type. So now we're in a position where we have a single way of asking the question and a place that we could put behavior in these item types. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use these um, types to simplify um, our code. Because we know that the item type can only be one thing at a time. And we knew that about the name as well actually, but it's easier to see this way and it gives us, gives us hope, should we say. So um, going through this first branch here, uh, this says if item type is Brie or item type is Pass. Um, I think we are going to start making these things into whens. The nice thing about whens is that um, they flatten e more easily and I find them easier to see the structure. So I'm just going to go ahead and do a bunch of those. Uh, and we're not going to, we'll do it just on the, um, just on the types. Does that continue to pass? See, getting longer, it's getting a bit more ugly. Um, but now what we're going to do is we're going to take this, when it's Brie or pass, I'm going to say, let's make that two different, two different branches in this when. Now, uh, that's not actually illegal by the look of things, but it is almost pointless. But now we're going to say let's go with Brie first and then let's go with Pass second. Now when this is Brie it can't be Pass. So this must be false. And now IntelliJ will simplify this for us. And when it is Pass uh, this must be Pass. So IntelliJ will simplify that for us as well. Um, sulfurous is sitting in here um, and we see we can um, pull sulfurous out of here because this is a no-op basically so we can pull that up here and that still passes and um, 
if we get this right, then everything else must be other. And this is a pointless test. Run that. OK, it's a little bit wordy because of all these braces. Uh, but we'll leave those in for now. Right, the second bit. Um, we had the same sort of thing. It's either sulfurous, in which case we do nothing, or it, it's else. Um, well, let's leave that for now. And now we have another branch that we can do the same thing to. So we have a branch that says we're Brie uh, or pass. So we can flatten this bit. Now let's take out this block here. Reformat. Run. One more, one brace too many. Every time running the tests. And then we can flatten this as well. So this is, uh, again, we should maybe have made a when. Given that when, we can move sulfurous up. Return is the same as an empty block, but we'll leave it in just for now. This is now um, eliminate. Well, yes, who knows? Simply not required. And sometimes IntelliJ knows, and sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes we have to help it. OK. So now we have um, code that's divided up into Brie, pass, sulfurous. Sulfurous, everything else, Brie pass, Sulfurous, everything else. This time round then we're going to merge these two before we pull them out into methods. This uh, two branches here, when item type and when item type, but this one is after the sell-in. So what I think we're going to try, um, it's going to be a bit of a pain, but we're going to move this take this test and move it inside here as well for each one of these. Experimentally tried here but we're only making that test twice so that shouldn't make any difference to anything. We're going to move that like that. So we're making this more complicated inside here. Sulfurous doesn't care but this does as well. check that that works um, and having done that then we should be able to delete that if test because it's now in each one of those branches it still passes and now it's in each one of those branches we should be able to merge these branches between the both of our legs so Brie we're going to take this branch here out of here I'm going to move it up into here. Still passes. Um, the pass, we take this out of here and move it up into pass. And we're going to take the else and cut it out of here and move that into other. And we're going to need to put some braces in there. Like that. Format that and run it. So that was a stage we did later on last time we refactored. Uh, this time uh, just demonstrate that we can play around with it earlier. Okay, so now we have two branches or two whens uh, this we know is aging and this we know is um, degradation sometimes things are getting better but we, we were calling it degradation so let's pull this out as a function and we're going to call it age 
and let's pull this out of the function and we're going to call it degrade um, now having done that this looks as if um, uh, it could be a method on item type maybe um, so that if we were to pull um, this uh, here as a parameter uh, maybe this as a parameter uh, then we could inline uh, that and now you can see that we can make this our receiver Uh, and having done that, we, we'll just run this tests. Don't expect anything to change. So now <coughs> this has moved up here. So Gilded Rose is now saying take the item, type of the item and use it to update the item. And now we can take this and move it down into um, our item type class. Can we do it here? Interesting question. Seems to be the only place in Kotlin that you actually need a semicolon. This now becomes update. Nice. And of course, we can do the same thing with uh, age. So we can move this to a receiver. And we can do the same thing with degrade. Having done that, we can take this and move it down as a function, a method on item type. Run those tests. And the same with age. Okay, so now we are in a position where uh, Gilded Rose is very simple. We ask a type of item and we ask it to update the type to update the item for us. We have a number of fixed subtypes of item and we have a age and degrade where we actually ask the subtype of the item, um, the type of the type, to work out what code to call. I'm not sure that this enum is helping us now um, because we, we would mean that we couldn't add other items, other types of items in other parts of our code base where we don't change item type. Um, so I am inclined to make this not an enum class but a um, just an open class and to move these out as objects that extend that. We can in fact extend enumerations, um, add behavior to subtypes of this enumeration, but it all gets a little bit complicated. Um, and I don't think it's where we really want to be in the end. So what we're going to do is we're going to take these, put them in here, we can say, take those, drop them down in different lines, and each one of these things wants to be an object. You don't need more of one of them, which extends item type. Uh, and because that's going to be a I messed that up. Extends item type. There we go. And now item type itself needs to be an open class but it doesn't have any enumerated instances. Everything else though should continue to pass fine. That's good. Now let's look at distributing behavior between the subtypes. So here we have age and we say when it's self do nothing. So if you made this a protected open function, then we would be able to override that
insulfurous and do nothing. Run that, test it works. Which it does. And now we know that we have overridden it, this in sulfurous, so this cannot be sulfurous uh, um, if we're calling this version. So we can take out this. Now this simply becomes our default behavior. That's good. Now let's uh, play the same game with Bree. This time it's a little bit more complicated, so we'll make a method out of this, which is degrade Bree. And we're going to make this an, a protected open in Bree then. Uh, degrade, we want to override, and we want to make that degrade Bree. And IntelliJ isn't seeing this because I suspect that it's private. Make it public for now to check this works. That's good. Now we can inline that because nobody else... Uh, well, actually, there are two of them. Just before we do that, um, logic applies again. We've overridden this in Brie, so this cannot be Brie here. That means we can inline this. Reformat and run. This then is a method of degrade pass. Make it public for now. Override it in here. This is in pass. What does it mean to degrade? It means degrade pass. Inline that. Before we do, remove the use in here. Back up to pass. Inline that. Reformat. Run it. Good. Now, uh, going back into, oh, other way, uh, item type, we're left with uh, sulfurous, what does that mean? That means that sulfurous is degrading not at all. Back to sulfurous, so degrade does nothing. That's good. Back down into item type. We know we can't be sulfurous. And if we can't be sulfurous, then we are other, basically. So we can now say, uh, uh, we can delete that and that, fix that, reformat, and that is our default degradation. Now it's not clear to me that we ever now use item type other. Um, actually we do, um, uh, yes, because we need an instance basically to express our default behavior. There we have it. Run our tests. Now you can see we could pull item type out into its own place. At that. Move all of our item types to go with it. And you see we've expressed our default behavior in uh, this um, top level type, item type. And then we have individual singleton objects that express different 
different types of behavior. And from there, we could go to um, the sort of solution we had in previously, where we express the amount that we want to change rather than mutating the items altogether in these degrade and age methods. Anyway, um, I hope that was enjoyable, useful, maybe even both. Um, really just a way of looking um, at A, what would happen if we didn't change item at all, and B, how far we could get uh, refactoring in our procedural code before we pull things out into objects and whether that helped. And I think actually it did a bit. Um, it allowed us to see things um, probably quicker than the previous way of doing things, but on the other hand, I'd also um, had the experience of knowing where this was going in some sort of way. Um, I hope you enjoyed that and um, hope to have more content for you soon. Oh, I should also say that um, this is all about pushing a book. Uh, so Nat Price and I um, have recently published a book with O'Reilly called Refactoring to Kotlin. Um, this is material really that maybe we didn't cover in the book. Um, uh, sort of thing that doesn't really change in Kotlin particularly. Um, but one of our ambitions in the book is to uh, show how we can refactor code and sort of change it from one thing to another and um, through a series of refactorings. So uh, have uh, instead of just single refactorings, we have a set and we migrate code from one thing to another with refactorings. And I hope this has demonstrated those sort of techniques and maybe even improved your refactoring ambition. Thanks very much.